So I've known Dan for about six years. Uh, Dan is also an activist short seller. He cut his teeth in China as a short seller. Uh, and yeah, we came to know each other professionally over the years and then became friends. And he's top tier short activist, one of the people who really does things properly, very diligent, and got, he just finished a run for uh, Congress. Obviously, wasn't successful, but uh, is looking to launch his next venture. So we're, we're thrilled to support him. Dan, tell us about what, what you've got planned and how right, right now the landscape is to find short opportunities in China. Well, what I have planned is what I've done uh, for the last 10 years, and it's to find corporate wrongdoing, malfeasance, uh, generally by management. Uh, and the landscape has never been riper, actually. Market's at an all-time high. Uh, and coming back from my run, my desk was filled with, with reports uh, that range anywhere from fraud to like right there next to fraud, that, that kind of corporate fraud malfeasance. Fraud in China? No, not in China, US but companies. of course there are many in China, but I'll be focusing on U.S. companies as well. As it relates to, to the China uh, area, which yeah. is an area where you have uh, made some of your track record, yeah. is that just uh, Chinese companies that have listed in the U.S. That, that are trying to mislead U.S. investors, or are this much more rife across you know, domestically listed Chinese companies? Well, we generally don't play on the A-share market because we can't really invest there. Uh, and it's a, it's a very dangerous place to try and short. Uh, it certainly does play in Hong Kong, uh, where we have done some work. Uh, we exposed TechPro some years ago, 91% drop into bankruptcy on the Hong Kong exchange. And it does continue to permeate here in the United States, mainly because it's not illegal in China for a Chinese citizen to steal from an American citizen. So we have a trillion dollars worth of market cap of their stocks here, and their CEOs are not accountable. Carson, is there anything besides the fact that uh, the market's at a high, valuations maybe are a little bit aggressive, uh, that says this is a good time to find these types of situations? In other words, are there any themes going on? Uh, you know, when you have multiple years of uh, earnings growth and you have the accumulation of, you know, loose accounting or whatever it might be? Well, it's, it's a good and it's a bad time. So it's good from the perspective of, we think there's a huge number of egregious companies with large market caps. It's bad in that the markets are kind of inured, or investors are inured to risk. And so it's really what investors will accept these days is kind of galling. I mean, the, the type of accounting that companies do in broad daylight, um, where it's really misleading and all of this non gap presentation that the, the markets hang on. I, right. Look, I think it ultimately ends in tears to some extent, but um, I'm not sure where we are in the cycle. But there, the one thing is I feel there are so many CEOs who feel like it's their God-given right to be able to cash out 50 to $300 million worth of stock in a few years, and that's causing them to undertake some very aggressive behaviors.